tonight on Nate Newswatch. Concerns are rising over the new Omicron variant arriving in Alberta. If it got really bad, then being online, I would think, be the best option for us. A place for homeless veterans to call home. Our charity is dedicated to supporting those that stood on guard for our country. And why now is a good time for you to fill up your gas tank. It would be nice if the price of gas was down what it used to be compared to oil. It just seems like inflation is quite a thing. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. The first cases of COVID-19 variant Omicron are in Alberta. The case was confirmed Tuesday from a returning flight from Nigeria. At this point, government-directed COVID protocols are not being adjusted in anticipation of a further spread. But it has raised the specter of more preventative measures being put back in place. How would this new variant affect Nate's COVID-19 plan and educational delivery? Our Nicole Gruber joins us live from our news center with more on that story. Thank you, Ben. Along with other countries, the federal government placed travel bans on several African countries following the news of the new variant. And as of Tuesday, travelers within Canada need to be fully vaccinated. With the arrival of the new variant, Nate is following along closely to see if any changes need to be made. We have reason to believe that we can overcome the challenges ahead. The Premier said the best way to protect yourself and others is to get vaccinated. Alberta's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Dina Hinshaw, spoke on Tuesday about the arrival of the Omicron variant in Alberta. Hinshaw says the goal is to delay the spread till more is known about it. We are well prepared for this eventuality and have the necessary tools in place to monitor this case and any potential spread of the variant. While we may not see many changes with travel here in Alberta, if we do see another lockdown, will universities and colleges such as Nate have to see another online semester? Or will they be implementing new measures in order to help prevent having to send most of their students back online? We're going to continue what we're doing right now, is ensuring that everybody who's coming to Nate campus is fully vaccinated. We want to make sure that we're following any public health guidance that is now in place or that may change in the future. That's all based on science. Most students are back on campus with in-person classes and some say they wouldn't mind having to go back online if it was necessary. What's difficult is if we have to transition back and forth. That's what we experienced like this past semester, right? If it got really bad, then being online I would think be the best option for us. If it was all static one, like one course online and just online, that would make it way easier than just like swapping back and forth considerable amounts. Right now, students are staying on campus and Nate wants everyone to know that everything they do is so that students can come and learn and be safe while doing it. Nate will update any health and safety measures along with the province's guidance. So Nicole, how many countries are banned for travel in Canada? Yeah, there are currently 10 countries that are not allowed entry into Canada. And if a traveler came from there 14 days before the ban, then an additional testing and quarantining will be required of them. Alberta just updated third vaccine doses. Do we know who those are available to? Yes, six months, six months after they got their last dose, Alberta's, Albertans 60 years and older, First Nations, Métis and Inuit people 18 years or older, healthcare professionals providing direct care that got their second dose eight weeks or less after their first dose and people who got two doses of the AstraZeneca or one dose of the Johnson vaccine and appointments are available starting Monday. Thanks, Nicole. That's Nicole Gruber reporting live from our news center tonight. You're watching Nate News Watch. A new neighborhood made especially for homeless veterans welcomed its first residents this past Wednesday. The neighborhood was put up by the Homes for Heroes Foundation and is the first of its kind in the city. Veterans can live here in safety and comfort as they readjust to society. There is a great need in Edmonton. I mean, we're dealing with between 180 and 210 veterans living on the streets of Edmonton, and that's unacceptable. And our charity is dedicated to supporting those that stood on guard for our country, as is many of our partners in CP Rail and ACO. And, um, so, look, we're going to see how this goes. There will be no public access for the first few months as the residents adjust to living in their new homes. Ottawa recently passed a bill that allowed more time for sick pay leave, and many are demanding to see that here in Alberta. The bill will give workers up to 10 days of paid sick leave. This will be beneficial to all Albertans since around two-thirds of Albertans don't have paid sick leave. 
The only problem with this is that there's only been allowed to workers in federal regulated workplaces like airports, banks, and postal services. However, the Alberta Federation of Labor is looking to include all Albertans in this bill. As of last weekend, Edmonton car owners are taking advantage of lowered gas prices. But just how long can we expect the good times to stay for? Should be good here. Prices have gone from the $1.30 range earlier last month to as low as $1.10 at some places like Costco. Drivers around Edmonton are being quick to try and take advantage of the prices while they can, but experts predict that it's likely they will go back up as early as next week. Unfortunately, based on the price of oil, it sucks that how high our gas prices are compared to what they've been in the past. But when it comes to it, uh, at least across all of Canada, our prices are better than most. It would be nice if the price of gas was down what it used to be compared to oil. It just seems like inflation is quite a thing. With continuing growth in oil prices at over 80 US dollars a barrel, it's not likely we'll see lower gas prices again anytime soon. Coming up after the break, we'll see how one local startup is breathing new life into old gadgets. They're giving a second chance for vintage TVs, radios, and more. Back then it was made with a lot of style and a lot of, uh, a lot of good quality, so it's just uh, very cool, unique stuff. The Edmonton Oil Kings are going warm and fuzzy this weekend. The teddy bear toss game is back. All that and more coming up in sports. Stay tuned for weather to see if it'll be raining cats and dogs this weekend, or if you should be putting your furry friends in some winter gear. Well, December is here, and along with it, a perfectly cold and wet Albertan winter. Sadly, that appears to be the case. We have Caitlin here with weather to tell us what our weekend temperatures will look like. Yeah, thanks guys. Our scales are tipping towards the colder side now, just in time for the meteorological winter to hit. That was on December 1st. If you haven't put your outdoor Christmas decorations up yet, this may be the last weekend to do so before temperatures start to drop even more, especially with this weekend sort of being the first we're seeing of those colder temperatures starting to swoop in. Now starting with Calgary, they're not super cold, but they are mostly cloudy and they do have a 60% chance of snow this weekend. And so does most of Southern Alberta, like Lethbridge and Medicine Hat. Those guys will be getting hit too. Nothing too much different than the minus eight mark though throughout the weekend. Now over to Jasper, they are also sticking with that 60% chance of snow. Nothing, nothing really happening around Jasper. It's more so going to be in Marmot Basin, which is looking really good if you're an outdoor winter person, especially for the skiers and snowboarders. They're sticking around that minus 10 to minus 15 mark for the low. Now over to Fort McMurray. These guys are going to be getting hit with some colder temperatures, sitting around that minus 22 to minus 24 mark. Nothing getting higher than minus 16 really. So that 60% chance of precipitation will be sticking around a little bit just because of the colder temperatures. Now over to Edmonton, our average high is a little bit uh, below average than it should be. We're sitting around the minus 15 mark and our weekend is looking fairly sunny and not too many clouds. But for our averages, we are seeing the averages should be around minus three. So we aren't too low off of that, just about a three degree difference and minus 13 as the high. Our records though, plus 15 in 1907 and minus 44 in 1880. Now, I personally don't want either of those. I'm fairly content with where we are right now sitting at that minus 15 mark. So just a reminder for everyone parking on residential streets right now though, we are in a phase two parking ban throughout the city. Crew members will be posting signs at the entrances to neighborhoods within that 72, 72 hour range of working in the area. So just make sure you're keeping an eye out for that. That is all for weather. Newswatch weather is brought to you by NR92, the station for the students. I think it's safe to say most people watching at home are probably doing so on a flat screen in their living room or maybe even on their phone. That's right, but for one Edmonton duo, they're not satisfied with modern LCD screens. No, they'd prefer the tried and trusted cathode ray tube. It's like stepping back in time. 
racks of old records, and stacks of vintage radios and TV sets. This is the specialty of Unique Antique, founded by old school friends Mitchell and Shane. They've been tinkering with old electronics since they were in junior high, and now they're making it into a full-time business. Building up till Christmas, it'll, uh, it's going to keep us really busy. But um, that's kind of what you need to do to, uh, to get it to take off, is uh, put in some time and, and a lot of effort and keep building it up. We're literally scrounging through estate sales, garage sales. Yeah, Facebook marketplace, live wherever, man. It's all over the map. To see more of their work, you can follow them on Instagram at unique.antique.yeg. The first half of the college season is coming to an end, with Nate's volleyball and basketball teams having their final games this weekend. And the Edmonton Oil Kings are at home this weekend with back-to-back -back games. Our Nathan Carlson has more. Thanks, guys. The women's basketball team is currently sitting in fifth place with two wins and two losses. They are looking to wrap up the first half of the season on a strong note tomorrow night. The women faced off against the Concordia Thunder this past weekend, picking up two points with a win. Now they are preparing for their next opponent, the Kings University Eagles. I mean, we've seen them in preseason, so, you know, we have film and, and just, you know, repping the things that we need to rep in, to, in order to uh, be able to play our best game possible. You can catch the game tomorrow at 8 p.m. on ACAC TV. With the first half of the season, is Season almost complete, the men's volleyball team is looking to end it with their perfect record. Last weekend, the men sweeped the Concordia Thunder, improving their record to a 4-0. The guys look to continue their strong game, heading into their final two games before the winter break. Just stay hungry. Like, like I told the guys in practice, we got to start beating each other up. Like, don't be afraid to tell the guy to do better, right? Don't be afraid to have those hard conversations and definitely get on each other's butts and make sure everyone is doing their job. The guys will host Lakeland College Friday night and then hit the road for a game in Fort McMurray versus Keanu College on Sunday. You can catch both games on ACAC TV. After a two-year break, the 14th annual Oil Kings Teddy Bear Toss game is back this Saturday night as the Oil Kings face off against the Moose Jaw Warriors. On Tuesday, the Oil Kings revealed the custom jerseys for the game. The last teddy bear toss was in 2019, where a new record for bears tossed was set. Over 16,000 bears flew on the ice after the Oil Kings scored. And not only is this a big game for the fans in attendance, it's also a big game for the players. You know, being a junior player, playing in a bigger rink, you know, you don't always get a, a full stadium, but this is kind of the one time of the year where uh, you know, you do, and coming out for warm-up, I think it's always pretty cool, and that's uh, you know, a big reason why everyone uh, you know, looks forward to this game, and I think it's for a great cause. Every bear thrown onto the ice is donated to Santa's Anonymous for families in need this Christmas. Kids aren't the only ones getting an early gift this Christmas. Four Oil Kings have been invited to Team Canada's World Junior Selection Camp. Across Gunther, one-timer scores! The division-leading Oil Kings look to carry the momentum from Sunday's game into their upcoming game Friday night against division rivals, the Medicine Hat Tigers, who have been on a five-game losing streak. Sebastian Cosa is one of the four players invited to the World Junior Selection Camp. Cosa has put up a .927 save percentage and three shutouts through 19 games this season. Cosa is thrilled at this opportunity. Yeah, yeah, it's obviously really exciting. Um, you know, I think we, we kind of play up for, uh, you know, the beginning of the season's kind of leading up to, to World Juniors, and, and you kind of hear being told that, you're, uh, that you made the team, that you made the camp. COSA will head to camp on December 8th alongside teammates Dylan Gunther, Jake Neighbors, and new defenseman Caden Gooley, who was acquired by the Oil Kings on Wednesday. So, Ben, do you think the men's volleyball team is going to end the first half of the season with a perfect record? Uh, I can't say, Nathan, but what I can say is that I'm pretty stoked to see what happens with them. And Cole, are you planning on going to the Oil Kings Teddy Bear Toss this Saturday? I've been to a few already, so I wouldn't mind missing this one out. Or not missing this one out, sorry. Perfect. Thanks, guys. That's all I got for sports. Coming up after the break, if you're looking for a place to donate to this holiday season, check out Santa's Anonymous. They're back up and running and looking for toys.
really looking for is right now the 9 to 12 year old toys and books. So things like Lego and board games are really important to us. Coming up in entertainment, we got musicals, we got Christmas lights, and we also have Christmas markets. All that and so much more coming up on Nate Newswatch. Apparel for Newswatch provided by TLA Development. I don't know about you, Cole, but to me, the Christmas season is all about giving. I couldn't agree more, Ben. And one charity is taking that to another level. They're making sure that every child gets their toys this holiday season. For over 60 years, Santa's Anonymous has been giving gifts to families that aren't able to afford their own each year. They, had e they, ha and, they and other charities give out over 20,000 gifts valued at over a million dollars with the help of over 1,200 volunteers. And this year, they like to bring those numbers up even higher. So we actually include in every gift package two toys, a book, and a stuffed animal. So it's actually a full package. And what we're really looking for is right now the 9 to 12 year old toys and books. So things like Lego and board games are really important to us at this time of year. They're open for donations right now. So be sure to check their website to find out where you can drop off your toys. Also, they're taking volunteers. Applications are open on their website. You know, Cole, with the semester finally starting to wind down, I'm really looking forward to being able to find some fun activities to do this holiday season. Me too, Ben. Luckily for us, Robert Bradley found a few fun holiday-themed activities for us. Thanks, guys. Well, it's December, and you know what that means. The holiday season is upon us, with many festive activities like markets, musicals, and lights. Actually, quite a few lights, especially at Rad Torque Raceways. We rotate through quite a bit of uh, lights just to change up the show uh, every year. The Magic of Lights is a two and a half kilometer course with over one million LED lights and animations used to bring seasonal characters to life and show holiday scenes. It's a drive through experience with tickets pricing flexible depending on your car. We have a few different uh, ticket types. We have our general car pass, which is $30. And that's per car load, up to eight people. So if you and a whole bunch of your friends want to come out, take a look at our show, it'll be that, that flat price for the one vehicle. And we also have limo passes for 50 and school bus or large bus passes for 120. A portion of the ticket cost goes to charities like Food Bank, Santa's Anonymous, and the Canadian Tire Jumpstart. Tickets are available online or at the door, and it runs till January 8th. Candy Cane Lane is back once again, hoping to light up your holiday season. For over 50 years, the residents of Candy Cane Lane have been decorating their houses to show some holiday spirit. While last year it was a drive through only event, this year you can walk or drive down and they even brought back the sleigh rides. Uh, I think it's just the excitement that happens in December, so there's always lots of buzz around, there's lots of people, it's just a fun time of year for everybody around here. I just like to do something a bit different and keep it, keep it light and uh, get away from some of the, the normal stuff you see around here and just stand out a little bit and have a little bit of fun with it. The event is open from December 10th to New Year's Day. It is free, but a donation to the food bank is appreciated. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. And that's exactly how Festival Place plans to do it with Elf the Musical. Based on the events of the film, we follow Buddy as he leaves his home at the North Pole to find his father and help him rediscover the joy of the holidays. With lots of songs and dances to get you in the festive spirit. And the musical, um, Elf the Musical, has included so many more songs and dance numbers and things that they don't have in the movie that create this huge spectacle that is a lot different of an experience than to watching a movie at home. Tickets are already on sale, but they're going fast with some shows already sold out. Tickets are available online right now and the show runs from December 11th to the 28th. Black Friday might be behind us, but that doesn't mean the shopping season is over just yet. Showcasing local artisans, vendors around the city, supporting small local businesses, entrepreneurs. Boss Events is teaming up with Millwoods Town Centre and Rio Can for a pop-up market in time for the holiday season. The market has everything from sweets and treats to art and clothes, all in support of local craftsmen. So all kinds of 
great things, little stocking stuffers to bigger items, and having a great, great time, a lot of interest. We're here from uh, 12 to 6, Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 12 to 5, and we're here until the 14th. The holiday pop-up market is open now in Millwoods Town Centre, and they offer free gift wrapping, if you're like me and not too great at it. So, Ben, anything I pointed out there catch your eye? Well, uh, I don't think you necessarily pointed it out, but I was really taken aback by that Ryan Reynolds cutout. I'm seriously going to have to check that out. Yeah, that was a fun thing to watch. And Cole, I know you used to do theater. Any chance you'll check out Elf the Musical? I've seen the movie about a million times, so it'd be nice to get a different take on it. Uh, exactly. Well, I have to go decorate a tree. Love you guys. Well, that concludes our last regular showing of Nate Newswatch. But be sure to stay tuned these last two weeks for our Newswatch Extras, where we have plenty of news features we're excited to share with you. And with that, I'm Cole Mercer. And I'm Ben Druin. Good night. <laughs>